So these are the top five trends that you have to know from this year's 2023 Consumer Electronics Show. So this year, they really made the event more virtual, but also it's also themed about sustainability and the metaverse. So we're going to start seeing the, the difference between consumer and enterprise metaverse because one, you can work remotely, you can start collaborating with people virtually, or two, maybe you just want to use it for gaming and for better overall visual and auditory and even smell experiences that you could do at home. Because I just, I just remember that there is a device here, a new device that they just gave an award to that actually reproduces smell because that's the most powerful way to remember anything. Just a quick note, I'm going to be covering my top five trends, but if you're interested in my top nine products from 2023 CES, well, I'm going to have a separate video for that. So as a result, we're going to be focusing on the consumer trends that are going to be most impacting you in 2023, 2024, and in the far future. And a theme that we've noticed across all of the brands that we've checked out here is that they are really focusing on how to make your life more convenient and how to make it easier because everything is now trying to link up, kind of like how Alexa, all your devices are integrated. And you know how we have talked about how the Fire TVs, the new ones, the Omnis and the QLED Omni was integrating your television into your life, which would also integrate into your Fire, other Fire devices. Well, LG, Hisense, TCL, Sony, they have all updated, and Panasonic as well, they have all updated their UIs. So you can not only use it as a streaming, they're also putting some of that software into their home devices so that one device will be able to control them all and you can automate it and keep it all uh, updated and in front of you based on utilizing their respective apps. So that's something that we're going to want to keep an eye on because we're seeing so many options. Is this going to be like the streaming wars where you're either going to be all on LG or you're going to be all on Sony or all on Samsung or are they going to make and just make one system that can operate in between each one instead of being locked out just by picking one particular brand for your home. So we're going to have to see. A lot of brands are getting integrated in smart home and they're trying to find their own ecosystems because whoever controls the hub controls everything. So here is TCLs. You can see they have their own air conditioners now. They have humidifiers, dehumidifiers, portable ACs. They have all of these refrigerators. They have laundry machines. So one of the biggest themes of the CES 2023 is that all of the major television manufacturers seem to be getting into adding high-powered multi-channel Dolby Atmos facing, top facing, ceiling facing, rear facing how many speakers they can put in they're trying to add as many speakers as they can because the new battle seems to be not only in the visuals but also in the audio one standout that i have to say that has really impressed me was hisense because hisense has really killed the game with their u6 and their u7 and their u8 television especially in 2022 they did announce that their sales have been going up and up and up they're probably the fastest growing LED television panel manufacturer in the world. And now they're the global second largest global television producer in the world as well. Now the U8, the U6 and the U7 are all getting the addition of the micro LED technology. It's not just gonna be on the most premium offering, it's gonna be on all of them, which is a huge deal because this normally limited to some of the most premium and expensive offerings from their competitors. The U6 is gonna be still costing less than $500, but it's gonna have four times the amount of local dimming zones. So it's gonna have a much better color and brightness ratio across all inches and pixels on that television. The U8 is probably Hisense's uh, pinnacle device right now, but they're coming out the ULED X, which is gonna be their new upcoming flagship. So Hisense is now getting off of the bargain or more value play televisions and they're moving on up. They're going all the way up to Sony and Samsung, knocking on their front door, maybe not at full 8K, but definitely in the value 4K and premium 4K divisions. We're gonna see how they compare. Also, they're coming out with premium laser projectors, which Hisense is the original and they are the originators of this type of system. Just one last thing, the brightness level on the U8 is going to be 1500 nits, which is astronomical. But the ULED X is going to be 2500 nits, which is so high that 
I'm scared that you gotta turn it down, otherwise it's gonna be as bright as the brightest screen in your house, maybe even bright as your windows. So that's crazy. So Hisense now has the chip that they call the Highview Engine X. So this is a 16-bit light control algorithm that has 65,500 brightness levels and it has three times the in in contrast, environmental contrast of the OLED TV. Highview Engine X also comes with the first 8K AI picture chip, which intelligently detects every frame and scene by learning, analyzing, and then training the entire data set to optimize the picture in real time. You're going to be seeing the addition of Wi-Fi 6E, so you can use and utilize the full speed and bandwidth that your new routers might be giving to you. There are some strong claims that Hisense made. They're saying and stating that they anticipate the U8 for 2023, the new one is going to be the best television, at least the best value television of 2023. They are already announcing that they believe they're going to be the winner. And based on their previous results, I have to say I do believe them. The LG Signature OLED is now going to be completely wireless. There is no cords. It's all going to be connected by a remote box. So kind of like the Samsung frame would you have the one box, this one is going to have a box that everything is gonna be plugged into like you do your router and then your television will wirelessly connect to that box. So that is a much easier television to install and mount on the wall since it's not gonna have any cables running to it. So one of the most interesting things that LG announced, in my opinion, is that they have announced that they have updated their LG ThinQ. But so what LG is going with is that they are gonna be updating their home devices more frequently because as their menu and as the uh, software and the computer tree that's behind and operating all those devices get more complicated they can change what they're able to do when you get them on day one versus one year later similar to how your phone gets an update and suddenly gets new features like a better camera that might be coming to lg products like your vacuum and your fridge or a computer because what they're doing is that they're going to provide the update it's going to make changes and it's all happening on the software side so it's not just the hardware you're going to be getting updated when you purchase a new item it is that you're locking in yourself with new and updated software that's going to be refreshed so your product is always feeling new and updated we just finished the samsung press conference at ces and the big thing for them was connected home everything they talked about was how the integration between all their devices, be it their cell phones, be it the home appliances, and basically anything else they make, they want it all integrated. They even announced the release of a hub. So they're gonna have a smart home hub that acts as a wireless charger, but is also gonna be able to control all of the other smart home devices inside. And I find that this is very similar thinking to what Amazon and Google and Apple tried to do. However, the difference between Samsung, LG, Hisense, all of these different manufacturers at CES is that they actually produce and manufacture a lot of products that you use on a regular basis, be it, be it your washing machine, your refrigerator, um, your air purifier, your, your automobile, your wearables, your phone. So they can integrate all of this in together. And then you have your refrigerator being the biggest screen in terms of your kitchen. And then you have your living room having the television as the biggest screen and the controlling screen for your the rest of your home. So that's how Samsung is envisioning the future. And that is what they talked about at the press conference today at CES. A major trend we want to highlight as a number three is the rise of AR and virtual reality. So AR stands for augmented reality. It's a technology that blends virtual elements with the physical world like you see here. Suddenly, all of this is getting mixed in, which is going to be impacting us not only in education, but also in entertainment, medicine, and video games. Because now you can play video games that not only move with you, that put you into the virtual world and let you create your own avatars. So AR can be used to provide detailed information about a person's surroundings, allowing them to better understand their environment. So a shirt so with sensors allows you to have haptic feedback directly while playing your favorite game, just like Luke Skywalker got from Obi-Wan Kenobi when he was training to become a Jedi. Other companies were using it so to enhance not only just gaming, but 
really immersive learning experiences. So to teach and share how to do something, but do it virtually. And we're seeing this type of technology stretch across the board, and it's gonna be integrated into even enterprise where it just makes things more efficient for quality control or for something like having just virtual meetings where everyone could be in the same room observing something similar while working remotely. And based what I saw at CES, it's really because camera technology is really catching up. The camera improvements are getting so much faster and the AI chips are getting more responsive and able to handle a busier load, especially if it's trying to navigate and decide what is actually viewing. You see this technology not only used on things like diets, Yes, diets where it can assess what food you're eating. I'm standing under the TCL link and TCL has this really cool exhibit at CES. And the best thing about it I find is that TCL is making big strides on the VR and the AR front, surprisingly. And they also have released a ton of new home appliances. Probably these home appliances are gonna be part of their integrated home systems that is gonna be competing with the Samsungs and the LGs of the world. Right now I'm going through all of the AR and VR techs. There's so much new stuff. Like, how do you even keep up? There's so much new stuff now, but uh, it's all based on updated cameras. So you have better camera technology, and then you have better sensors that are working better together so that it can deliver different experiences for you. So as I'm walking through CES, we are heading towards the Samsung section. So This leads me to trend number four, which is autonomous people movers or APM. They are automated transportation systems that move people without having to worry about an operator or even directions. They can be typically used in airports, theme parks, and public spaces. They're usually powered by electric motors and feature advanced sensors and software that allow them to operate fully autonomously. We're seeing the first wave. You saw the Samsung vehicle and the Halon, and this is from ZF. These are autonomous shuttles, and there's different perspectives in terms of do you want to use it to shuttle a lot of people or do you want to shuttle meetings how efficient do you want your autonomous mover to be but it works without a driver which saves people time what they're really meant to do is just help with sustainability and to save energy costs because they're convenient and they're reliable for everyone that's involved in using an APM as long as it's safe and this is now the bus of the future. So we're going to be start seeing this type of design everywhere. We're seeing it not only here, but from the other manufacturers. And I'm really excited because uh, it just maybe it's not people's thing right now, but it could be people's things in the future. Trend number five is robot and power everything. So we're seeing the closest that we've ever been to the rise of the robots. They're programmed using the AI and a lot of the technology you're noticing is actually from things like robo vacuums. So robot vacuums have been really good at offset detection and now we're seeing it on this. This is the Works lawnmower. This is a robot lawnmower that can cut edge to edge, especially without you having to push the lawnmower. That's really cool. There's also upgrades in terms of pool cleaners. There's upgrades in terms of microwaves. There's upgrades in terms of almost everything you can imagine a robot to help you do. Even for warehouse moving, they have upgraded the robots because all of this is powered by the AI engine and the AI chips that can figure out what the robot should actually do and help it make kind of its own decisions, even though it's not gonna have consciousness, this is the closest we're gonna get up to this point in time, which means this is the closest we've ever been with the smartest robots in the history of mankind. So something that I've noticed is that the massage chair, just the massage chair is making a comeback because I see massage chairs everywhere around here. They're all over the place and different variations. I mean, look, I just woke down a little bit more and there's more massage chairs and there's a queue to try them out. But this is the end of CES for me. I'm sad to go, but there's been so much action here and I've learned a lot. And I'm happy that I was able to share with you. So thanks for watching everyone. This is David with The French Flow. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll catch you next time. Bye, bye, bye.